What's up everyone? My name is Morgan Lee and welcome back to my AuthorTube channel. As you can tell, today we are in a different location. We are in my bed because I am taking my own chronically ill advice and doing what my body needs and it needs to be in the bed. So today I am going to share with you the four projects I'm working on for this July Camp Nano so that I can do my insane goal of writing 10k every day. So if you like videos on writing, publishing, crazy writing antics, writing challenges, and other things in that vein of videos and please give this video a thumbs up comment down below click that subscribe button if you haven't already and ring the bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a video so let's get into it let's get on to me telling you about my four projects for this camp NaNoWriMo and also my plans for succeeding in my uh, succeeding in my insane goal because I know there's a lot of you out there who are doubting me who are like this girl is crazy she thinks she can write 10k every day does she know how hard a 10k day is yeah I know how hard a 10k day is but what else do I have to do with my time guys I don't have anything to do like nothing this is technically my summer vacation because I work at a school as of right now we're going back in August but who knows so if we do go back in August I'm gonna have to go back to actually dealing with life I know everyone else is getting back to life right now but I'm not yet back to life yet I don't have a lot to do this July I have nothing I have nothing to do I have work but I'm working in the other room and just saying I could still get writing done over there I can still get writing done while I'm working. I'm answering the phones and working on the computer. The computer's already there for me, so again, I have time. I'm gonna jump right in to what I am working on. The first project that I will be working on is titled Seed Among the Rocks, which is the second book, the second book, <laughs> in the Seedlings Trilogy following Seed Among the Thorns. Seed Among the Rocks takes place in an alternate Earth where three brothers are the creators of the entire universe. Our story follows two teens from two separate families who are forcibly bound together by an ancient curse, one to obey and serve the other. Emerton is an elemental protector and she is bound to Shaw, Lermont, He's a demon slash, he's a demon. Um, he has to give up his own immortal soul, mortal soul. He has to give up his soul and take the souls of others in order to balance out the worlds. And I didn't mention this earlier, but yeah, there's two worlds. <laughs> there's the earth and there's an alternate prison world that Shaw and his family are technically, technically connected to, and then there's the Earth. And these two families have to maintain the balance between the two worlds. And it's not fun for them. So, Seed Among the Rocks follows them on their journey after the events of Seed Among the Thorns. And if you want to know about what happens in Seed Among the Thorns, you can buy the book one day. <laughs> because like I said before, it's up there. And you could read it if you want to. And I'm not going to take it down because it's a learning moment. Okay? I, 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 have, to I have to teach. I have to learn myself some things the hard way. And... I know a ton of people on AuthorTube have said, oh, Amazon's so easy, I could just upload my document, and then I could have a book, and I could be an author. And so I'm not alone in doing that. I'm not some person who's not taking AuthorTube or their authorness 
seriously, they're writing seriously, because all of us probably have done it at some point. But then you take it down. But then I'm like, why, why, why am I taking it down? Because it's like a learning moment. It's like the blemish, you know, like on my author career. And it's, it's fine because I look at it as a, a learning moment and a tool to make myself be better, to choose better, to do better, and to realize that I need to give my characters the love and support that they need to fully develop before I send them out into the world. So did I shoot Emerton and Shaw on the foot? Maybe. But am I going to fix their boo-boos? Yeah. You know, sometimes your, your kid goes out in the world and they come home with scratches from from going through life. And, you know, you got you to gotta patch them up and send them back out there. But you don't just delete them from the world. You know, you can't just snatch them out of the world and just coddle them forever. No, you got to leave them out there. You got to you got to motivate them. You got to keep them. You got to push them to succeed. And that is some kind of strange metaphor for how I feel about my my book and why it's still up there. So, again, tangents today. I don't plan to stay up like insane hours of the day. I don't plan to you know, right into the dead of night, I don't plan to stress out about this process at all. I am very strategically planning on achieving this goal. So I downloaded Chris Fox's 5,000 words in an hour book and I listened to it. And it's very quick, very quick listen, very easy listen because we already do writing sprints. We kind of know how it works. But the difference is when we do writing sprints on on a stream, for instance, we're usually getting up to go to the bathroom. Oh, I gotta get some coffee. Oh, let me check whatever really quick. It's not really strict. You know, we can get distracted with the comment section. We can get distracted with watching the hosts, I don't know, do something weird or whatever. And we can get very, 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 very distracted while we're sprinting. So we don't necessarily get the output that we could potentially get. The sprinting idea is not new, but what's new for a lot of us is blocking out every other distraction. What we don't, well, me, I would talk for myself. I don't necessarily block out everything. Now, I don't have all of my things like ready. I don't review the scene before I start writing. And maybe you do. And maybe you still only get a couple hundred words. And that's completely fine. I'm not suggesting that I'm right. And this is how you should do every nano and write 10k every day. I'm, I'm not saying that. This is a personal challenge for me because why not? What have I got to lose? Nothing. Maybe my sanity. But I'm already in quarantine, so how much sanity do I have left? Let me tell you guys, it's not much. The second book that I'll be working on is a new adult contemporary romance, and it is called Short, Black, and Asexual. Now, all of these titles are my working titles, I guess. I don't really give working titles, I kind of just title it and it usually sticks because titles usually come first. Short Black and Asexual follows Willa Montgomery who is a 19 year old college freshman and she is a human rights activist. So she's very involved in all issues of human rights, whether it be LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus issues or Black or Black Lives Matter issues, or the issue, I don't know what you would call this, immigration, yeah, <laughs> immigration, or whatever. She's very involved in social, social justice, and that is her thing. Taking care of people, and her family, and her friends, and fighting for justice and human rights.
just her navigating her sexuality, her identity, and all this other beautiful, like, coming of age, coming into adulthood stuff. And it's going to be great. I'm super, super, super excited about it. Okay, so that is... That is short, black, and asexual. So, Chris Fox. He talks about sprinting, so he does he starts off with five minute sprints and basically getting your riding speed up and increasing your riding speed. Now I'm a pretty good typer. Normally I can type probably average about 70 words a minute if I'm like, you know, copying something. I'm a pretty fast typer. And if I'm processing something in my mind that's like really going, the scene that's like flooding out of me like I can type it like really fast so I'm not afraid of like not being able to type very fast and typing for me I know a lot of people have like wrist issues and I do too I have wrist issues as well um, from my EDS but there's so much it's so much easier on my wrist than writing I can only write for maybe like 10 minutes if that before my hand starts to cramp and because holding my pencil like this I don't know it moves joints out of place and it's just not a fun time but typing is so much easier and I am going to try dictation but I'm getting all all kinds of out of order of what I wanted to say anyway so I read Chris listened to Chris Fox's book read Chris Fox's book and um, he talked about building up your writing speed and doing short bursts of sprints so you can get like a feel for like how fast you can write and then you can make goals to increase how many words you can put out. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, so my next novel that I'll be working on is The Skeleton in My Bathroom. And that follows 20-year-old Cree Merriweather, who is a college dropout who has Crohn's disease. So the story follows her journey in... <laughs> the story follows her journey into, one, accepting her diagnosis and living life with that diagnosis without, like, giving up on life. And, of course, she finds romance along the way, and it's all about... Again, kind of like this identity slash sexuality slash like coming of age type thing, accepting the things that you can't change about your life or yourself. And it's just going to be a very sweet story. And I've been hanging out with my sister too much because I just did this thing that I don't know Gen Zers might do. But anyway, that is the third book that I'll be working on, The Skeleton in My Bathroom. And I'm like, super excited because the main characters of The Skeleton in My Bathroom and Short Black and Asexual are both black girls. And not that I've never written a black girl before, but I haven't. See, because Emerton, she's like, she's mixed. And who else is there? In my first novel, which was Gabrielle, which I changed her name in my rewrite, but which is what I'm going to talk about next. She's technically white. <laughs> technically white. <laughs> She's white. And I don't know. I just find it I don't know. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool times. I like I like having varieties of cultures because <laughs> diversity is a thing. And I don't know. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun times. He also talks about outlining before you sit down to write. And this I agree with 177%. Because I used to do this when I was when I was young. I mean, I've been writing since I was 6. But as far as like writing full length stuff, the first book I worked on was in the 4th grade. I was in that cycle of just revi rewriting the whole first like 7 chapters for a while. And I really got serious in, I think, the 7th and 8th grade when I wrote, when I started basic outlining. I didn't, like, research outlines or anything or writing structure. But I decided I would write a one-sentence, like, 
this is what this chapter is going to be about. This is what this chapter is going to be about. Sorry, it keeps popping on. It's like, are you still here? And I'm like, yeah, I'm still here, but like, I don't want to see my face. Okay. So I would write one sentence summary about what was going on in that chapter. Like, Eric kidnaps Gabrielle. And I'm like, okay, so we're going to go through and he's going to kidnap her from this, from this part. And it was just so much easier for me to actually write the scene because I had the, the one sentence summary about what I was going to write. And so like Chris Fox talks about that in his book. Like you have to be, you have to know what you're going to write in order to write the words. Like you're not, you can't just go in blind and then try to write 5,000 words in an hour. It's not really going to work because unless you just, I don't know, like have a super brain or something that does that, I know. And yeah, I just think I'm getting off topic. It might be this coffee, but um, I was, what am I saying? Outlining before you start is very, very good. So always, guys, like, that's what I plan to do. I'm not giving you advice because I'm not an advice channel. I'm just a, this is what I do, and this is the mistakes I've made. This is what I've learned, and here you go. Interpret it with how you will. Okay, so the fourth book that I will be working on, this NaNoWriMo, Camp NaNoWriMo, is, what is it? Is, oh, my Shakespeare retelling. Okay, it just went dark. Is my Shakespeare retelling. So, I have not recorded this video yet. Excuse me, sorry. Make sure it's still recording because this happened to me quite a bit. Quite a bit. Did a whole video. <laughs> Don't even remember what I said in the video, but I was like, oh, that was good. And then it's not recording. That's BS and just very annoying. Okay, so... Yes. Okay. Lost my train of thought. Shakespeare retelling. So I am planning a massive, 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 massive Shakespeare retelling series. So I'm not just retelling one Shakespeare play or two Shakespeare plays. My plan. Okay. Again, guys, I'm extravagant when I plan things. I am planning on using 17 of Shakespeare's I think 34 plays so about half of them okay, okay so my camera cut off because I ran out of recording space to write files or whatever but the last one is Fair Sun Envious Moon which is a Romeo and Juliet retelling that is going to be a kind of action-packed science fiction slash supernatural slash thriller slash romantic suspense novel um i'm not entirely sure of the genre yet it's it's gonna be a, a big a big mash of things and i'm pretty excited to write it so it is the first in a shakespeare retelling series that i'm doing um so again with my crazy extravagant plans i am planning on creating a series all within the same world that is going to be retellings of at least 17 of Shakespeare's most famous plays. And so you might, you might be wondering why, why would, why would you do that? And it's because why not guys, why not? So it's very loose right now. I think of all the, all of my books, it might be the hardest to write at this time because I'm not 100% sure of the world and the overall conflict that is going to tie them all together. So I'm still figuring that out, but I have a pretty solid idea from the outlines that I've done in the last few days. That's what I'm going to do. So the last couple of days I've been working on outlines for the four stories that I'm going to be working on. I've done the five foundational beats as outlined in Save the Cat Writes a Novel. And I'm gonna fill in this, the rest of the beat sheet. And I'm only planning on doing the, the one sentence summary for each scene. I feel like all I would need is a one sentence summary, but if I can go in deeper before nano hits and I have to start writing, then awesome. 
but I'm only challenging myself to write a one sentence summary of every scene. Not like every beat, but every scene that's going to be in that beat. Okay, so that's the plan. I don't know if I have anything else to say about the plan. I feel like I, I rambled for like, let's see, 10 minutes about, about that. Let's end it with this. Like I said, I'm not going to be riding up into the wee hours of the night and being unhealthy and drinking a lot of coffee and doing all this other stuff. It's only my first cup, guys. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not going to do this in an unhealthy, like, way that's not sustainable. My kind of goal here is to create a writing routine, which I don't have. I'm going to be trying on different routines as I'm going along this coming month. And what was I saying? Yeah. Oh, so I picked out um, four hours every single day that I'm going to write. So I'm all, it's like a part-time job, I guess. So four hours out of the day. So from 9 to 10 and then from... 1 to 3, so right before work, and then at the end of the night when it starts to get slow from 9 to 10. So I have those hours carved out for sitting down, completely focused on writing. So, outro time. Alright, so that's all that I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching this entire video. I know it's probably a little bit longer than I would have liked it, but... If you watched all the way to the end, you are a real trooper. And I thank you so much. And I would like to hear your thoughts. What was, it? What was that? I would like to hear your thoughts on my works in progress. Tell me what you're working on in the comments. Any kind of comment you want to give, but make it nice and make it constructive. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up. I will be doing daily vlogs all throughout Camp Nano. And like I said before, if I included that clip or not, um, I will be doing live streams every Sunday at 1 p.m. And then a kickoff party June 30th at 1145 Central Standard Time, p.m. Nighttime because it's kickoff into Nano. And that's it. That's all I got for you guys today. Again, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you on Monday with another video.